Hi, in this video I'll give you a couple of suggestions uh, for displaying uh, a small AC signal on a large DC offset in an InfiniVision Agilent oscilloscope. So uh, the problem with a small AC signal on a large DC offset is that the scope's attenuators cannot display the whole signal with its details on the screen. Uh, and that is due to the the front end of the scope having limitations on those amplifiers. So here I'll show you a couple of suggestions on how to work around this. If you really need to see both the AC component and the DC component at once on the screen. So what I've done is I have a 4000 series scope here and um, I have two wave gens. So I set the wave gen to produce a sine wave at 60 kHz. Uh, it's a pretty low bandwidth signal, uh, which is good because uh, otherwise it might be too difficult to show both the AC and DC components. Uh, as you can see, the amplitude uh, of the sine wave and it's riding on a 4 volt DC and you can see there's a 100 to 1 ratio between the DC component and the AC component. So uh, let's run the scope and I'll show you what's going on on the screen right now. You can see channel 1 is uh, showing the DC component with the AC signal on it it's hard to see because you can't trigger on this signal. The problem is the AC components are so small, they don't go over 0.6 of a division. So the trigger circuit cannot identify a trigger event, which is in this case a rising edge. But I can use the um, mass magnify uh, operator on channel 1 to zoom in on the little sine wave on the DC signal. Of course, it's moving about right now, and you can't really see it in the channel 1 display, but you, you can see it in the math display, and it's pretty noisy. So let's stop it. And now when it's stopped, you can see the little sine wave on the incoming signal and its magnifier is actually zoomed in on that and the reason why it's so noisy is because that the AC component is so small that it's embedded in the noise of the DC also remember that uh, to get the math waveform to show appropriately you need an offset that is quite big uh, quite big and since we, as you can see the offset is almost is about 4 volts and this shows where the ground is so the offset is off screen at the bottom of course uh, you can't trigger so you will have to stop the scope and you cannot use a single button and uh, the mode you should leave it in auto so that it updates the screen because if you change it to normal, it's looking for a trigger point, but there isn't one. And it doesn't matter if you leave the trigger circuit to couple in DC or AC, it's still quite hard to trigger on a signal like this. So that is the first method of uh, looking at a small AC signal with a large DC offset. Now let's look at another way. Since the signal is pretty low bandwidth, you can uh, double probe the signal and then use one channel to look at the AC and DC components while using another channel to zoom in on just the AC uh, component. So in this case, you would have to double probe that test point. So just make sure that you're not loading it too much that you're going to disrupt the operation of the circuit. Alright, so I have uh, channel 1 connected to wave gen 1 and wave gen 2 has the same signal 
You see, it's tracking it. So uh, let's turn off the magnify. And turn on channel 2, which is AC couple. And we can set the trigger to s trigger on channel 2. Because uh, channel 2 only looks at the AC component and you can zoom in using the vertical scale knob on just the AC component. You can leave uh, the mode now to be normal because it actually has a trigger event, a trigger, and you can see it's triggering. Uh, you can leave it in DC or AC coupling because it's just looking at the AC component. It removes the whole DC part of it. See the ground is right here. And uh, you can do a single to get more detail on the AC and DC signal right here. And you can see that you get a very good uh, detail and clean, not so noisy signal on the AC part. The reason uh, I get a very good signal like that is because I'm using high res mode. If you leave it in normal, it'll be slightly noisier. Just slightly noisier. So uh, that is the second option. You can use channel 1 to look at both the DC and AC component and channel 2 to just look at the AC component. Uh, just remember the coupling. Uh, leave uh, channel 1 in AC, uh, DC coupling and channel 2 in AC coupling. Uh, one final suggestion would be to use a, um, a differential probe, but on the negative lead of the probe, you put in a DC offset to cancel um, to cancel the four volts DC on the incoming signal. So those are the three suggestions for you if you want to display both the AC uh, and DC components of a signal that has a very small AC signal riding on a very large DC offset. So hopefully this helps you. Thank you for watching.